The fate of Stormbringer hangs in the balance. The forces of light have been able to get their troops into position, and then they just keep balking, which has given time for the forces of darkness to converge on the area. Remember, all they have to do is keep Stormbringer from leaving the table by the end by October 12th. Today is September 27th. Still two weeks left on the clock. These guys are going to be hard pressed to keep our heroes from grabbing and getting off. Although it is worth pointing out, depending on where you're at, it is at least three or four turns to get off the table. Oh, it's going to come right down to the wire, guys. Today is the 27th, and you can tell from the writing that something interesting is going to happen. Remember, this is a cosmic fight. We are in a decaying orbit, drifting closer and closer to the sun. Meteor shower. Every unit takes D6 minus 3 strength point wounds. This does not trigger a morale check. Very important. So, suddenly, all of these units are going to start taking a beating. And all of our morale checks are going to be a lot more difficult to make. I'm going to need a lot more wound chips. Oh, and I should point out, for those of you that need me to do this, let me run the numbers. D6 minus 3 means on a result of a 1, 2, or 3, no wounds are suffered. We'll start down here. And so no wounds. Then we'll go here. No wounds. Suffers 3 wounds. She gets plowed, just clocked right in the head. 3 wounds to her. And then we'll go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, and 3. No wounds for those 3 guys. We've got a unit of heavy infantry over here that takes one heavy elite infantry. And then our giant takes none. So one goes here, three goes here, which removes a stand. They're going to be at minus three for all of their checks. I think we rolled for everybody on the side of chaos. I am going to be using blue chips for the forces of the good guys. And duh, we'll start down here. This unit of foot is going to take none. This unit of elite riders is going to take one wound. The god Aminar is takes none. Our elite riders are going to take three. That removes a stand. And then we've got a unit of heavy war beasts that lose none. Mandino the hero dodges and takes none. And then we've got a unit of infantry up there. They are also going to take none. So not quite as many wounds as I had anticipated. Which, I guess, that's fine. But, you know, this is the kind of randomness that happens. Man, Blimp the Pope really took it on the chin down here, didn't she? We're ready to move on to the activations. The first activation is recovery for this unit of wyverns. They are battered. And the first thing they have to do is try to make pass a morale check. As lesser war beasts, they need to score a result of four or better on 2d6. But they are at minus three for all the wounds they had, meaning they need a seven or better. With a result of a three, they fail. That forces them to take another wound. And they fall back another half move. And um, because there's no... What, another, oh, people are in the way. We're going we're gonna to bring them back to here. Uh, the rules call for an inch and a half of spacing between units. I don't think I've been worried too much about that. Uh, that's it for them on this turn. They're going to have to re-roll again next turn. That means it's time for... Hmm, who do we want to move next? Let's bring these guys up. Well, wait a minute. Nope, that's not true. We have to do wild charges. Are they within six inches of these riders? Yes, they are. Now, we get to choose. We've got two guys that have to do wild charges. Our Celestial Giants and our Space Lobsters. The Space Lobsters are going to charge these guys first. The good news is we get to pick who charges first. And we're going to use our Greater War Beasts. Is that right? To chase off those Light Riders? Is that what we want to use them for? Those Giants are ponderous. They do not have Wild Charge. That's good for us. It means we can bring these guys charging into these Light Riders. And with a result of a 7, they are going to do that. So they're going to move three inches to here. And at that point, these riders have the option of trying to skirmish. On a seven or better, they're going to launch an attack, and then they're going to skedaddle. So with a ten, they are going to succeed. Not, But the problem is, they're only going to be hitting on sixes, but they get to re-roll, and because they're so awesome, 
those veteran horse archers, um, they re-roll missed hits. They only hit on sixes. So that's all there is to it. So they get one, two, three, and then we re-roll looking for sixes. That's a really powerful ability, isn't it? So they get a total of four hits altogether against a unit that has an armor of three. Four hits, armor of three. These guys, oh, I only have three of them. Look at that. So they're only going to take one wound. However, that one wound does force them to make a courage check, which they succeed. And then, okay, so a couple of things. These guys are going to fade back a half a move. That's two and a half inches to here. And then these guys will complete their charge up to here. All right, so that's it for the wild charges for the forces of chaos. Then we're going to move our ponderous greater war beast, our hundred giants are going to move on a, what do they move on? Greater War Beasts move on a five. They move on a six. Is he within three inches of his boss? He is not. So that's going to end the turn for the forces of chaos. All they managed to do is scare off some guys. The forces of light do not have to worry so much about. Um, they don't have any wild charges to worry about. Nobody is battered. So all we're going to do is we're going to start by trying to bring Mandino up to grab this. We have failed so many times. It's got to happen this time. All he needs as an elite foot to activate is a five. And we got a four. So once again, the forces of light are just unable to get motivated and get moving and get up and get it. I know these videos are short, but I'm hoping that the fact that we've got real-world complications and that we're playing the game in real time kind of compensates for that. And also, hey, you're getting three solid weeks of videos out of this, guys. That's kind of fun. The tension is killing me. Let's take a look at what's probably going to happen tomorrow. You have a greater war beast and a lesser war beast. So we're going to have some combat because the lesser war beasts have to charge first. Maybe he gets up. He is close enough to scoop this up on his turn if the dice go right. To find out, tune in tomorrow when we may have another random event as well. Till then, I'm praying for you.